Hi, everybody. Welcome to Custody Matters Live. My name is Danica Joan, and I have a couple of guests with me on the show today. Uh, one is Mark Ludwig, and he's been here before, and he brought another person, Jeff Miller, to us on the sh uh, show. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Good morning. Thanks, wow, for thanks for having us. So, Mark, since you know a little bit more about Jeff Miller and he, him being from your state of Missouri, why don't you share a little bit about uh, who, who Jeff is? Yeah, for those of you that haven't heard of Jeff, you, you need to hear of this guy. And uh, he didn't pay me to say this, I promise. But uh, I tell you what, this guy is uh, literally the single most active family law attorney actively participating in legislative activity. Uh, around the country. Now, that's not putting any other attorneys down. There's a lot of great attorneys, um, but Jeff has been not just passively participating. I mean, he has been aggressively working on the Missouri bills. Uh, I mean, going down to the Capitol on a regular basis, several times a month, uh, very, very active meeting with legislators for the last couple of years. And this past year, especially, has really become active helping other states with verbiage type questions that they have. Uh, he's just been a great addition to the community. You can tell by his background, um, he's the life of the party. Uh, uh, Jeremy Roberts, who some of you have heard of and, and some of you know, and myself, we tend to be uh, the melancholy, the cautious, the C personality, very laid back, very boring. Uh, we like facts, figures, details. Jeff is like the life of the party. He makes things fun for us. Uh, I'm excited. If you haven't watched it, you need to tune into his TikTok. But uh, with that introduction, uh, like I said, I, I just think the world of Jeff, just a neat guy. And also, let me mention, too, uh, very compassionate about fathers. Now, we don't want people taking advantage of him, but uh, he's a family law attorney that knows what it's like to be on, on the non-custodial side and not have the finances. And I have seen him uh, do some things for fathers that, that didn't have the finances. And I mean, this guy... This guy really walks the walk. I mean, he really serves non-custodial parents in the in the state of Missouri in an unbelievable way. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, you got me at TikTok. So, Jeff, what's the? I have no clue about TikTok. I, I tell you what. Contrary to popular belief, I, I do I do uh, appreciate and use uh, facts, figures, <laughs> and specifics. I try and do it in a fun way. Um, I try and grab people's attention. Um, and, uh, you know, no one wants to see um, uh, slightly uh, uh, overweight, middle-aged, uh, hair-challenged uh, white guy dancing TikTok videos. So I immediately thought, perfect. <laughs> so I just started out doing some um, silly little things about how we need to focus on getting this 50-50 rebuttable presumption passed. Uh, with model language that we're using, for example, in Missouri, because it cuts through and it solves so many problems. It solves this, the expediency issue. I, I, I'm a big, I, I, you'll hear me say a lot of the time, there's no point going back to court to get more time with your five-year-old if by the time you get it, she's seven. And, and, and so this rebuttable presumption cuts through a whole lot of things. It cuts through the timing. You know, we need expedited proceedings in family law, not I can't get in front of the judge for four months. Um, and we need uh, cost effectiveness. And that's what this, that's what these efforts are, are aimed at doing. It's why they're not popular um, among at least the profession anyways, because we're trying to make it fast, easy and affordable um, to get both parents back in their care, back or ha keep both parents in children's lives. Um, as much as we can, and, and this effort achieves that. Um, anything worth doing is difficult, and it's been a difficult process, but we're going to get through. So, so you've been a non-residential parent. So you you get what it's like to to fight for time and and be a parent instead of an entertainment director. Um, yeah, you know, we we the first thing, and thanks for reminding me. The first, one of the first things we need to do, and, and uh, Illinois has done a really good job at this, is we need to just start with the nomenclature. You know, I have joint custody, yet Missouri views me as a non-custodial parent. How the heck is that? And I'm reminded about that every single month I log in to pay child support. Click here if you're a non-custodial parent. So we need to change the nomenclature 
to just take that out, whether, you know, I don't really think residential parent does it um, because my son resides with me, you know, a, a lot of the time as well. It's not quite 50-50, but, um, and Illinois has done a great job of saying, instead of making a designation between um, custodial and non-custodial parent, we're going to call it an allocation of parenting time. That's what it is. I'm still a parent. Um, I, I'm, and, and I'm not a part-time parent. I'm a full-time parent. It's just my time as a parent is allocated and shared, hopefully one day equally, with the other parent. Yeah, in Florida, they've, they've shifted it to away parent and home parent. So yes. if the child is with you that weekend, even, you're the home parent for right. the next 48 hours. Right, as it should be, yeah. Yeah, I really, I, I really like um, where it's going, and it's, and it's very important for people to be sensitive to how the nomenclature makes people feel like that they are more powerful, more in control, or that they don't feel like that they have as much as you know as many rights as the other one. A lot of absolutely. it starts in language. Yeah, absolutely, and you see that then um, uh, built upon in. Uh, especially with younger kids in schools, in doctor's offices, and all those things. And once we sort of start making that change, um, you know, I think the old guard of control will start to fade away. And, and I see it, I see it to an extent with younger parents. Um, I see them, and we're, we're doing a great job, and Mark has been fantastic about this, with just getting the, the, the phrase out there, equal shared parenting. When folks come to me that are younger parents, they're already coming with um, almost a default position of week on, week off, or 50-50. You know, we're seeing newer judges appointed to the bench with sort of all that, um, you know, sort of by way of background. Now, what we need to then do is if that's what's already being done, then fine, we need to codify it in statute uniformly so you don't show up in uh, one court in one county with a different result 20 minutes away in a different town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. There's just, there's so much, like where do you tackle uh, the changes and stuff like that? Because I know that it's very, very important to have legislative change. However, uh, even if a judge believes in the old, the old way of doing things, you know, 40, 50 years ago, then they have the power to, to override what legislation says. And that's a concern. Oh, to an extent, I mean, you know, yes, if they ignore laws and statutes, you can always take them up on appeal, but that's always been my problem. And, and my approach has always been um, legally is it's a, it's a practical matter. I mean, folks don't have the time or the, you know, yeah, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars to fight for their inalienable right to be a parent, um, and I don't have off the top of my head, but you know, you, you read and hear about studies that show you know most Americans don't have five hundred uh, dollars set aside for an emergency. What more of an emergency could there be of of not having access to your child? Um, so we're trying to turn the process around in terms of public opinion, which marks me great at with the organization as well as all of our legislative efforts. And we'll throw in a TikTok to make it a little bit of fun on the way. I love it, I love it. Um, so Mark, I, one of the reasons that I wanted to make sure that you had, uh, you were on the show today is because you have an event coming up, is that right? Yeah, pretty, we're gonna pull it off anyway. This is the third year that we had planned on our annual Equal Shared Parenting National Conference. Uh, we've had the first two years we did in Washington, D.C. Uh, this year I had planned on doing it, bringing it home to St. Louis, uh, just because it's easier for people to get to. I, I noticed by doing it in D.C., we lost a lot of the West Coast crowd that uh, had to spend an entire day of travel time there and an entire day back. So by having it in St. Louis, it's easier access, but Turned out that it was meant to be in St. Louis because uh, for a while we didn't think we were going to be able to have it. Uh, the hotel that we were at still has a restriction of 10 people in their ballroom, which would have made it, uh, we could have had it in a phone booth. We didn't need to spend thousands of dollars on a hotel ballroom. But uh, we ended up just the one county south of us did open up, uh, Jefferson County. So we just moved it about, I think, 12 days ago. 
and we're full steam ahead now. It's going to be at the Drury Inn in Arnold all day, both days, Friday and Saturday, June 12th and 13th, so in a week and a half. But uh, very excited, and we, we did change the program around quite a bit over what we were going to do. In the past, I'm normally the type that, I love going to seminars. I just love sitting, in, I'm one of those weird people. <laughs> I don't have a personality Jeff does. <laughs> so, I'm, so I usually like to sit and taking notes and hearing speakers speak. So in the past, I've been that type that I've always organized our conferences where there's one speaker from stage talking to the crowd. And uh, we've had, Jeff can tell you, we've had a ton of people that say, can, can we do some role playing? Can we do? Well, this year you got your wish. Uh, we're going to do just a ton of interactive. Uh, I've got some friends of mine in the legislature that are going to be attending, so we're going to do role playing on how to meet with legislators with actual legislators. So people from the audience will be able to get up and sort of scrimmage with an actual legislator. I've got friends of mine in the media that are going to come, and you'll get a chance to scrimmage with an actual news person on how to handle a, uh, a media interview. So it's, it's going to be a neat time, and then we're going to... Uh, Jeff and Jeremy pri primarily, the two of them are, and once again, they didn't pay me to say this, but I, I just mean it. I, after going to 29 cities around the country last year, I haven't seen anybody in the country that understands verbiage and how it interrelates to other statutes. So the two of them are going to give a very, very in-depth talk on what verbiage do you need in your state? What do you need to look for in your current statutes? If you're going to change a law because there may be times when you change part of a statute, but if you didn't change it you know, to, to correlate with all the other areas of the statute, you did a bill that, ha that makes no sense, that literally will not work. So they're gonna give a pretty in-depth talk on if you wanna write a bill in your state, what do you need to look for and what pieces of the puzzle they have, have in there? What do you need to avoid when the opposition tries to throw amendments on? And uh, I think it's gonna be a very, very, like I said, I, there's no doubt in my mind, people are going to walk out of there with some usable information. Uh, in I the past, I said, and I don't necessarily mean fluff in a bad way, but our niche is more legislative. So there's so many great organizations in the shared parenting community, and we're not in competition. There's a lot of, of people like you that do much better with areas like parental alienation and the mental health aspects, which is not my strength. So our thought process was, well, if our strength is legislative, let's cut out all the other areas, feed people to other conferences for that, if that's what their wheelhouse is. If our wheelhouse is legislative, let's bring the people in that that's, their, that's what their passion is. So the whole conference this time is 100% dedicated to usable material that you can use in your state if you want to get laws passed. Hmm. I love the idea. I absolutely love the fact that it is a workshop. It's a, it is a, an interactive kind of thing because I know from my perspective, I don't have a lot of, of uh, you know, I guess, distinction in understanding how legislation works and who it is that I need to talk to. And then what do I say when I, um, even if I know how to reach out to them? Um, I know they, a lot of times they'll have these, these local forums, the different people at, at, at the Capitol will come around and have a public forum so that you get to say something. And I'm like, okay, so what can I say to these people that they actually have the power to, to do anything about? Um, so this is, this is awesome. I think this is probably just like everything else that's been, that has evolved in this quarantine. This I think is evolving into something that probably is not going to go to go away with your your future conferences well I'm, yeah. particularly, I'm particularly excited because and that's you know the benefit of attending this conference is AFESP is a 501c4 what that means is what we do is we lobby and boy do we lobby and Jeremy and I are actually going to replicate or put on exactly how we interact with uh, these legislators when we go to the Capitol um, we're going to do just basically a mock, uh, not even a mock, we're just, we're just going to do what we do at the Capitol for everyone there live um, on the one day. On the second day, we're going to use real-time examples. We've got about four or five state statutes already picked, and we're going to break down the existing statute, how to change it, 
and the reasons for. So we're going to be giving you real life examples, not just some, you know, comprehensive, you know, academic application. We're actually going to write the laws and show you how to do it for these four or five states. And then the final benefit is of attending. Um, what I've actually seen throughout the years has been amazing how it's grown is you make the contacts and connections that, you know, three or four months down the road come into play when we're when we're getting ready for the start of each legislative session. And we offer um, uh, a legislative review service where you can send us your, your uh, state statute and we'll work with you on developing language for the upcoming session. And the reason that's important is we do it now in the off session. So we'll have the conference in June. We may start getting emails around, you know, August, September. Hey, and this is the key part. Hey, remember we met back at the conference in St. Louis a few months ago. Oh, that's right. Absolutely. And then we'll work with these state groups and we've done, we've done five or six of them last year, but um, and we work through the state groups of how to uh, tackle the language, um, uh, draft it, and then meet up with your bill sponsor and go through the actual process in the fall off season. So right when January starts, boom, you're pre-filed and you're off to the races. Wow. Wow. I love it. I love it. Coming up with a strategy and you're building a, um, you know, a whole educated team that, that can go out and, and prosper. Well, and the key is to use that same sort of model verbiage that we've put together because what we can't have happening is, um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's easy to make bad law. It's hard to make good law. And especially with family, we need good law because what ends up happening is one state will then look at what did the other state do and how did they, you know, so, so we're ahead of the curve in that we're anticipating that. So we've got to make sure we have the same key model effective, effective legislation that's going to stand up to achieve these goals once you get the practical application in court, when you file, when you're divorced, when you're separated, when you're trying to get more parenting time. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so, Mark, can you share with us a little bit of maybe some of the other topics that are going to be covered? I know you ha you're going to have workshops and, and things like that, but are there other topics that you ha we haven't shared with people here? Yeah, we're going to try and take it step by step. So if somebody walks in that room and says, I want to get legislation passed in my state next year, the goal is that we're going to cover every major topic they're going to need to know. So we're going to have Jeff and Jeremy cover things like uh, you know, the verbiage. We're going to have um, legislators talk about how to meet with legislators, uh, how to meet with legislative assistants, because in, in many cases, early on, you're going to be dealing with their assistants more than you'll be dealing with the legislators themselves. And, and that's a big problem most people make is they want to meet with the big, with the big person. Well, in many, especially if you have term limits, some of the legislative assistants carry more weight in your state than the actual legislators do. Uh, we're going to teach you how to find those key people. Who are the influencers? I, I call them the puppet masters, the ones pulling the strings. And I don't mean that in a, in a negative way, but there are certain influencers. In, in Missouri, we had one at our last St. Louis event, a good friend of mine, Jim Lemke, who served in the uh, Missouri House and the Missouri Senate. But because he was so influential, we have, we have term limits in Missouri of eight years. But because he was so influential, his former chief of staffs and his former assistants are now the chief of staffs or lead assistants for about 12 other legislators in the state. So because of term limits, those legislators come in, they don't know what to do. Their chief of staff says, well, my former boss is my mentor, Jim Lemke, you need to call him. So Jim coaches these new legislators. So if you talk to Jim, you just influenced eight legislators instead of going to one at a time. So we're gonna talk about how do you identify these key influencers because it'll make you, the key is not just to be effective, but efficient. If you've only got a certain amount of time to come to your, your state capital, you wanna make sure that you're not just meeting with people, but you're meeting with the right people. So we're gonna teach you how to identify that. We are, as I mentioned, gonna have some uh, friends of mine in the media there that are gonna talk about how to meet with, with people from the media, how to be careful because media, their goal is to, to basically create a following. It's not a following if you just report news, you've got to help create news. So there, we're gonna help you give people ideas on how they could be blindsided by a reporter and not even know it until it hits the editing room and then they watch themselves on TV and realize 
wow, that wasn't what I thought happened in that interview. So we're going to coach people through that. We're going to talk about how to have a hearing, um, how to identify the people that need to be talked to on the committee, how to do a call to action. I mean, like I said, we're going to pretty well take it step by step through the whole process. Because as I've said over and over, I don't want to be remembered as the person who made the laws. I would be so much more honored if somebody would say, hey, you know what, I went to one of the seminars by that dorky guy and I learned something and by golly, we went back with a team and we fixed a law in our state. Because I want, I want you to be the challenge. I want the people watching this to be the change in your state, not us. We're just a resource. Yes, I love it. I love it. And, and it's, it is so close. It's just next week that it's happening, happening in Missouri. And what's really great because it's in the middle of the country is you don't, ha you don't have to just fly in. You could actually drive in, um, you know, depending on where you're located. Uh, so, and there are, there's limited space available because of all of the social distancing. Um, and Mark's done a really good job of making sure that, that everybody is safe but also making sure that as many as he can allow uh, are there. But it's first come, first serve, for sure. Yeah, we're going to be very limited on seating. So, so if, you know, there's still some seats available, but if you want to come, hurry and get your reservations in. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to go to the AFESP website, uh, AFESP.com, to get tickets. But there are still some tickets available. Also, we got a great rate. The jury in is the first hotel, if somebody were to drive from Indiana, because all the major hotels in Illinois are shut down right now, all the major hotels in St. Louis and St. Louis County. So if you're on Highway 55, you would say if you're coming from Chicago, this is literally the first hotel that's open. And it's a nice hotel. It's, it's the only nice hotel if you were to drive south on 55. It's the only nice hotel until you get to Memphis. So it's a, so it's not like they're begging for people. The hotel will be sold out with or without us, but we've got a great rate. Uh, normally it's 134 a night. We got them down to 99 a night with the AFESP discount, which includes a hot breakfast every morning. And I believe two of the nights they're going to give um, warm hors d'oeuvres in the evening. Mm -hmm. So there is a discount code. Uh, I think if you just say you're with Americans Frequent Shared Parenting, they can find it, but they gave us a number of uh, 241 -6079. Uh, 241 6079. But if you call, you want the uh, Drury Inn and Suites in Arnold, Missouri. Uh, Tim Drury's a friend of mine and there he lives in St. Louis. So I don't know how many Drury Inns we have here, Jeff, but probably 10 of them in the greater metro area. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're well established. And, so uh, make sure that you ask for the Arnold Drury Inn and Suites when you're booking your hotel. Got it. Well, we'll put it in the chat, put all that information in the chat so that people can can uh, uh, register and uh, get their hotel set up and stuff like that. Like, I see for you, I see because of this evolution, this is something that, you know, different chapters across the nation of AFESP would could really start having like workshops regular workshops and um, so that it can be more state focused, um, which I know is your vision. Like is, is the aspect of people coming together. And because some people say, well, you have parts of it online and some of it we will have online, some we really won't. And uh, you're gonna have to be there in person and it's not to hide things from people, but some of the things that we do um, that, that anybody does, if you're dealing with legislators, there's conversations that take place that you can't publicize. Yeah. Because if you do, you blow your credibility with legislators. There's times legislators tell you something in confidence and nothing illegal or deceptive or anything like that, but they're just things that they, they don't want to go public, at least at that point in time. And if you spill it out in public because you want credit and recognition and fame, you won the battle, but you lost the war and that legislator will never trust you with confidence anymore. Um, so, but there are certain things that we can say at a conference in a private setting we just can't say publicly to give people ideas of exactly what to say to certain legislators in their state and to give them tips. So some of those things, we won't, it won't be on Facebook Live that weekend. So a few of the sections, we will have Facebook Live. But even more important than that, in my mind, is the fellowship. Yep. It's, just, it's the difference between watching a baseball game in TV, on TV and being in the stadium or you know, listening to the radio or going to a concert. 
there's just, there's an energy and a feeling and a confidence and a belief that you have when you look around the room and see other people and say, you know what, they're doing it, so can I. Yeah. And then you build the friendships and the fellowship of, of literally people that'll be lifelong friends of yours. I mean, that, that's one of the neatest things when I did that tour last year was friends all over the country that uh, we just have a, a, a bond with as a friend. Yes, I, I am. I'm with you there. It's important. That's. It's all about relationships. I think it's just you know it's important to get to know people personally, and so you're not just a, an an observer, a third party sitting there taking it all in. And yet we try the best we can through Facebook Live and social media to get the word out. But it's a one way conversation. Um, and coming to these events allows for a two-way conversation and a relationship to, to, uh, to prosper. So good job. All right. Let's see. Anything else that you would like, any, uh, like to let everybody know about who you are and what are, what, uh, the plans are and, and all that before we sign off? Uh, you go first, Jeff. <laughs> Just make sure to, uh, Go to AFESP.com. I'm going to steal your thunder a bit, Mark. Uh, make sure to get your tickets. Be there in person because we're going to get it done in 21. <laughs> I love that. We're getting it done in 21. This, is, this means something. This is like I, every morning I wake up and I say, you know, I am like, I'm all about families restored. This is so important. It's not the divorce that causes the trauma to children. It, it is the, the, the conflict. Yeah. And if we can be part of resolving that conflict quickly um, so that children have a loving relationship with both parents, then we've uh, served our mission on this planet. So thank you both. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Jeff, for joining me today. And I just really wish you well at this conference. And I look forward to um, what comes after that. All right. Well, thanks so much once again for having us and glad everybody got a chance to see Jeff. You got to come to St. Louis. I'm telling you, Jeff is worth it. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be, I tell you, I, well, I know you, I know you, Mark. And so I know that it's not going to be a boring conference. I have no doubt that it's going to be uh, fun. And um, because the best way to, to deal with serious issues is to bring some levity in the, into the situation. Don't make it all doom and gloom for sure. No. All right, that's all we have for Custody Matters Live today. Uh, I look forward to seeing you next week and have a great evening.